of emergency to allow for flexibility of response and resources. We have received and requested an emergency declaration from FEMA. We have more than 8,000 electrical workers on standby. The governor continues to be in constant communications with the counties that are likely to be impacted to make sure that they have sufficient resources. They've been putting in their requests and we've been filling them expeditiously as needed. Uh, we will continue to monitor that situation as well as the governor continues to remain focused on the efforts here in Surfside. Uh, we ask Floridians to please begin their preparations. That includes being prepared to potentially be without power for a few days. Have enough food, have enough water for each person in your family, including pets. Uh, please stay tuned to Florida's weather channel. Make sure that you are constantly monitoring all local official warnings. Um, if your area is asked to be evacuated, it is for your own safety. Counties will open shelters as, as needed, especially for special needs, if they issue evacuations. Um, please be careful as you begin to make your storm preparations. The governor and our Division of Emergency Management Director have, cons have consistently reminded Floridians the dangers of generators. Make sure you use proper tools, proper materials. If you're cutting down trees, make sure you, you do that safely. Uh, overall, the state and uh, Floridians we know are well equipped to be able to handle the storm. We have our state emergency response teams working round the clock to ensure counties have all the resources they need. And I'll say a few words in Spanish. A partir del aviso del Centro Nacional de Huracanes de las 8 de la mañana, Elsa se encuentra a 55 millas al oeste de Cayo Hueso y se mueve hacia el noroeste 12 millas por hora. Los vientos máximos se están aproximando a 60 millas por hora, pero también se espera que Elsa tendrá y llegará a la fuerza de huracán esta noche antes de tocar tierra en la Florida. Estamos esperando la posibilidad de fuertes ráfagas de viento y fuertes lluvias junto con la, posi la posibilidad de tornados aislados. Elsa tocará tierra mañana a lo largo de la costa de la oeste de la Florida mañana por la mañana. Es importante que los floridanos no se concentren solamente en lo que es el cono porque sabemos que los impactos pueden ser fuera de la área notificada. En este momento hay advertencias de tormenta tropical para 22 condados de la Florida a, la, a lo largo de la costa oeste de la Florida y hay una alerta de huracán para la costa de la Florida que se extiende desde Pinellas hacia el condado Dixie. La marejada ciclónica también será motivo de preocupación. Les pedimos a todos que sigan las instrucciones de los funcionarios locales. Gran parte del norte y el centro de la Florida ha, recibido, ha visto un aumento de 300% en lo que es eh, la lluvia encima de lo normal de esta época del año. Y por eso aumentará la posibilidad de que se produzcan inundaciones y con fuertes lluvias persistentes. Se esperen corrientes de resaca peligrosas en la mayoría de las playas y por favor les pedimos que no vayan a las playas los floridanos. Antes de la tormenta, el estado emitió bajo el liderazgo del gobernador DeSantis un estado de emergencia para permitir la flexibilidad de respuesta y recursos. Solicitamos y recibimos una declaración de emergencia de FEMA. También tenemos más de 8,000 trabajadores, eh, de, trabajadores eléctricos en espera condados contactados eh, con lo, lo que es la posibilidad de poder ver uh, impactos directos y estamos garantizando que tengan los recursos necesarios. Eh, también está el gobernador está en comunicación directo con esos condados y seguimos enfocado en ayudar el condado con la tragedia aquí en Surfside. Le pedimos de nuevo a todos los floridanos que estén eh, notificados, que se mantengan informados con las, actual, a las actualizaciones y por favor que estén preparados para estar sin electricidad posiblemente durante unos días, tener suficiente comida, suficiente agua para cada miembro de su familia e incluso las, las mascotas. Eh, por favor, les pedimos que presten atención también a todas las advertencias de los funcionarios locales y en general sabemos que el Estado está bien preparado para combatir y para eh, para poder eh, resolver lo que es los impactos de, de esta tormenta y estamos aquí unidos con la alcaldesa asegurando que esta prioridad eh, sigue enfocado el gobernador. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Lieutenant Governor, Miami-Dade County Mayor, Daniela Levine Cabo. Good morning, everyone. 
here we are on the morning of day 13. Active search and rescue continued throughout the night and these teams continue through extremely adverse and challenging conditions. Through the rain and through the wind, they have continued searching. They paused only briefly for lightning, uh, which is legally required for up to 30 minutes uh, for pauses whenever there's a lightning strike within two and a half miles of the site. Regarding the impacts of Tropical Storm Elsa, we do continue to expect occasional gusts and strong showers today, and we're closely monitoring the weather, and we now have our weather service embedded within our search and rescue teams to work closely to track for any changes that could impact the work to assure the safety of our first responders. Through the team's ongoing efforts, we have recovered four additional victims. The number of confirmed deaths is now 32, with 26 of those identified. 191 people are accounted for, and we have 113 reports of people who are potentially unaccounted for. As I've mentioned before, these the detectives are conducting ongoing and very thorough review of these, these names and these uh, reports. Many were originally submitted incomplete. So if they, we may only have a name without an apartment number, without a date of birth or other details. So of that 113, only around 70 of those are people we have been able to confirm were in fact in the building during the collapse. Our detectives continue to follow up on every single report that was submitted, but in many of these cases, they aren't able to reach the person who originally submitted the report. So it's a distant relative or someone overseas without clear details, and that, that makes it very difficult for us to determine whether an individual was in fact in the building. We continue to urge all of the families who are missing loved ones to please reach out and connect with us so that our detectives can file missing persons reports with the police and we want to confirm every single account. Every single life that has been lost is a beloved family friend, a best friend, someone's child or parent or niece or cousin or grandparent and we know that waiting for news is unbearable. The waiting, the waiting and the waiting is unbearable and so <clears throat> Receiving that your loved one is gone is also unbearable, but we need information to be able to confirm exactly who is missing. Please continue to hold all of the families in your hands and your hearts and in your prayers during this unimaginably difficult time. We're also working hard to provide respite and support to the men and women of the USAR teams wherever possible. And today we brought in cooling stations closer to the site to provide relief from the ongoing heat as well as county buses where they can take quick breaks from the wind and other conditions. We're also grateful to the support from Royal Caribbean which is providing a docked ship where first responders can also rest between the shifts. NIST, our federal partner, continues to work closely with the structural specialists, with detectives and the fire rescue crews on site as the evidence gathering process is well underway. The teams are extremely well coordinated. They're capturing all possible insights from the debris and all evidence is being properly tagged and logged. The U.S. Geological Survey and National Science Foundation are also sending additional staff and the LIDAR scanners are working so that we can better analyze the debris given the rough terrain of the pile, and to make sure that we have the proper equipment and personnel on the site. All this evidence will be critical to the NIST eventual fact-finding report, and as we are working on all levels, local, state, and federal, to provide answers and accountability for the victims of this unthinkable tragedy, and we're going to be making policy changes, as you know, at every level and at every step in the building process to ensure that this can never ever happen again. Buenos días, aquí estamos en la mañana del día 13. La búsqueda y el rescate activos continuaron durante la noche 
estos equipos continúan atravesando condiciona, condicionados, no, condiciones extremadamente adversas a través de la lluvia y el viento y si se ha, han tenido que hacer unas pausas por los rayos. En cuanto a otros impactos de Tropical Elsa, esperamos experimentar ráfagas ocasionales y fuertes lluvias. Continuamos monitoreando de cerca el, el clima y tenemos el servicio meteorológico integrado con nuestros equipos de búsqueda y rescate ahí mismo en los escombros. A través de los esfuerzos de búsqueda en curso del equipo, hemos recuperado cuatro víctimas más. El número de muertes confirmados ahora es 32 con 26 de ellos identificados. Se contabilizan 191 personas y tenemos 113 personas de, potencialmente desaparecidas. Como mencionamos anteriormente, los detectives están realizando una auditoría, auditoría continua de esta lista y están llevando a cabo un proceso extremadamente completo para hacerlo. Muchos de los informes presentados originalmente están incompletos y constan solo de un nombre sin número de apartamento, fecha de nacimiento o otros detalles. De esos 113, solo hemos podido identificar 70 personas de esa lista que los detectives, detectives han podido confirmar hasta ahora que estaban en el edificio durante el colapso. Continuamos instando a todas las familias que son seres queridos desaparecidas, desaparecidos a que se conectan en persona con nuestros detectives para presentar un informe de personas desaparecidas a la policía mientras trabajamos para confirmar cada una de las cuentas. Cada vida que se ha perdido es la de un querido amigo de la familia, es un mejor amigo, un hijo, un padre, la sobrina, el primo o el abuelo de alguien. Y por favor, mantengan a todos estas familias en sus corazones y en sus oraciones durante este momento inimaginable difícil para todos. También estamos trabajando arduamente para brindar respiro y apoyo a los hombres y mujeres de los equipos USAR siempre que sea posible, incluidas las estaciones de infra enfriamiento, los autobuses del condado donde pueden descansar entre turnos y un barco atracado gracias a Royal Caribbean. Gracias, gracias a todos. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Surfside Mayor Charles Burkett. Good morning. This morning I was up with the family and uh, learned that uh, overnight uh, the work did briefly stop regarding lightning but has returned to full power, uh, did return to full power shortly afterwards. Uh, the wind is hampering the uh, large cranes moving very heavy debris. That's a challenge that they're attempting to work around right now. I met with the families uh, this morning with some families uh, and the losses to them are catastrophic. Uh, one family I met with had a, a daughter who had uh, recently graduated uh, law school, recently married in, in January, and uh, obviously the family is distraught and wanting to know, um, you know every detail about what's happening and whether or not their uh, daughter and their son-in-law are going to be found. I told them that uh, we are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, nonstop with waves of search and rescue teams, and that the Miami-Dade rescue teams out there, including the police and our foreign uh, uh, friends who are also assisting, are doing everything they possibly can, and they are as uh, intent on pulling everybody out of that debris pile as the families are in having those family members pulled out. Governor DeSantis, uh, I met with yesterday. Thank you, Lieutenant, for coming today. Um, 
and Governor DeSantis wants to uh, supplement the charitable efforts uh, that are ongoing now and has asked me to work on that project. His concern is that uh, nobody fall through the cracks with respect to funding. So there are significant donors that I will be working with and we will be working to uh, supplement all of the funds that are available to the families and make sure that everybody gets what they need. I know Mayor Kaba was at the uh, meeting this morning, also meeting with families, consoling them, providing them information, and letting them know they have our 100% support. Thank you, Mayor Kaba, for doing that. As usual, the Town of Surfside and I stand ready to provide any support to the rescue effect, rescue effort rather, that we can. Uh, we're small, but we're here, we're on the ground, our staff is working 12 to 18 hours a day, and we will continue to do whatever we can to uh, support the effort. We are currently responding to inquiries uh, from our large buildings in town regarding the collapse and advising them that they should do a full structural review of their systems. Uh, in addition, we are doing a deep dive with respect to the sister building you know called uh, Champlain North, which is essentially the same building built by the same developer at the same time with the same plans, probably with the same materials, and given we do not know why the first building fell down, we have significant concerns about that building and the residents in there. You know from the very beginning, um, we worked to make sure that those residents had alternative housing if they wanted it. Uh, several of them have taken us up on that offer, uh, but right now we continue to work with the condominium board uh, to make sure that uh, well, we can't make sure, but we're going to do everything we can to look at those structural systems, including ground penetrating radar, the columns, the beams, the slabs, and try to get our arms around uh, uh, what may be happening, what did happen. And uh, But like I said, we have some concerns about, not just some, but deep concerns about that building, especially given we don't know uh, what has happened there. But our engineer... Uh, is uh, actively working on it as our town official is. Lastly, I want to uh, relay, uh, and again, I'm going to do this publicly, and I know Mayor Kava has been extremely compassionate and supportive of the families. They've asked me if they can uh, somehow get back down to the site to visit. Um, I told them that I support that idea. Of course, we have to work around uh, the rescue efforts, and whether we do it over the course of a couple days, I think it would be very, very good for those families to again see the amazing efforts that are being uh, expended on their behalf, and uh, I will work with uh, Mayor Kaba to see if we can make that happen for the families. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Surfside Vice Mayor Tina Paul. Thank you. Good morning. Buenos dias. Uh, in my first time addressing everyone as a whole. I just want to say that we are all in this, in this together. The, wor the word that comes to mind first is gratitude. Gratitude for all the officials standing behind me here, standing with our community, for you, the media, standing with our community. We've all been here together since day one. Whether you see me here or you see me on the field, I'm there for the people. These are my people. This is my community. This is our community. And I just want to express gratitude for everyone who is helping in this collaborative effort and especially my town staff who have worked tireless, tirelessly behind the scenes, the volunteers, the members of our community. I also want to ask to keep in mind this is about our humanity. This is about the soul of our community, about the soul of the town of Surfside and the soul of the lost people that are still unaccounted for. And please keep that in mind. That's what we're praying for. That's what we're working for. We have an amazing community and our Full support from around the world is, is amazing. It's keeping us going. It's keeping us strong. It's keeping us whole. We're, we're broken right now, but we will, we will be whole again. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Miami Dade Fire Rescue Chief Alan Toninsky. Uh, good morning. Uh, we're continuing our search efforts all throughout the entire debris pile, all throughout the night. As mentioned, we did have one stop here at approximately 1 a.m. Uh, due to the inclement weather, thunderstorms, and the uh, winds coming through. 
Uh, we were implementing our search again, and again emphasizing searching uh, the entire all grids. Uh, currently, last operational period, uh, we still have our federal resources here on site. Uh, so our Virginia team, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, and New Jersey, as well as Florida Task Force 1 and Florida Task Force 2 uh, working around the clock. Uh, we're able to remove 124 tons of debris, which is equivalent now to uh, 5 million uh, pounds of debris off the pile. Thank you, Chief. Miami Day Fire Rescue Director of Media and Public Relations, Erica Benitez. Muy buenos días. Continuamos nuestras labores de búsqueda y rescate. Eh, las labores continuaron toda la noche. Tuvimos un, una pequeña pausa, pero eh, esta mañana continuamos estas labores. En este momento tenemos eh, aproximadamente 240 eh, miembros de estas cuadrillas de rescate trabajando sobre los escombros. Eh, también tenemos equipos de, de Pensilvania, de Ohio, de Indiana, Virginia y Nueva Jersey, los cuales están continuando estas labores. Hemos removido aproximadamente 4.200 yardas cúbicas de escombros. Esto equivale a un aproximado de eh, 2.500 toneladas de escombros. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Erica, and I welcome to the podium our Creole translator, Leonel Letterbor. Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour. Je dis encore, l'équipe nous a continué à faire recherche pendant toute nuit là. Et au chercheur, tu es campé vers 1h du matin pour environ 30 minutes parce que tu as un pile d'éclairs avec l'oreille qui t'a grondé. Donc, pour sécurité, tu es obligé de faire une pause. Pendant une nuit là, nous arrivons à jouer 4 autres victimes. Et ça portait quantité de monde qui décédé à 32. Quantité de monde que nous trouvons qui déjà, que nous connaissons qui là, c'est 191. Et monde que nous pouvons jouer, c'est 113. Détective yo continue à faire travail yo, un travail audit qui a appliqué pour le moment et pendant travail yo, police yo trouvé que dans building là t'es gagné 70 moun qui ont confirmé que t'es dans building là le bâtiment a tombé. Pour le moment, gagné Elsa qui a pas approché son nom. Elsa pendant nuit pendant journée avec journée de mer, les nuits là a porté en pile la pluie avec en pile vent. Donc il est nécessaire pour tout le monde faire attention pour être capable de protéger tête jour. Détective a continué à faire travail yo et toute équipe pour continuer et nous demander tout le monde pour continuer à prier pour yo. Investigation yo pendant yo a fait et après une preuve avec tout ça qui est nécessaire pour être capable de joindre responsabilité et établir réponse qui est nécessaire de sorte que disposition prend pour ça que arrivé à arriver encore. Merci en pile. As we go into our questions and answers session, we have Deputy Incident Commander Charles Surreal available and the Miami-Dade Police Department Director Freddie Ramirez. Once again, raise your hand, wait till you're called upon, and address the speaker, please. Spanish media? Yes. Gracias a la generosidad del mundo entero, tenemos fondos para ayudar los sobrevivientes. Y tenemos un grupo de fundaciones trabajando, eh, identificando las necesidades que, que caen al, al lado y que FEMA y el Estado no pueden eh, realizar. Y yo estoy trabajando con ellos para ayudar en identificar exactamente Eh, la, mejor, la mejor manera de usar los fondos y, y estamos trabajando juntos para que nadie, nadie eh, falta, nadie falta. Give a moment, we have over 200 firefighters that are actively searching on the pile. Uh, in regards to, yes, the, the grids that we weren't able to access with, with the building uh, that was still remaining in place, uh, we have been searching those areas B1 uh, and D1 was those primary grids and then partial into B2 and D2. Uh, no, unfortunately, we haven't, you know, come across any. 
Associate Vice President. Associate President. Uh, this is all for Chief Kaminsky. There was a report that you're having issues with water in the parking garage. Is that correct? And where did the water come from? Was it from the rain or from fighting the fire earlier? Or uh, multiple, multiple sources. Uh, yes, uh, early on uh, when we first arrived. Uh, the garage was partially filled with water, so uh, we were actually pumping throughout. Um, you know, once we maintained and were able to suppress the, uh, you know, different water supply systems, uh, also with the rain and also with then when we were, you know, attacking the fire throughout. So multiple times we've had to uh, pump out the, the lower garage. Right it's now. good now. Yes, sir. Now this is regarding the ongoing investigation, uh, and I know it's a bit of a broad question, but. How much closer are we to finding the cause of this collapse than we were 13 days ago? So, as you all know, we were focused squarely on search and rescue, but while preserving all possible evidence. On NIST, the National Institute for Standards and Technology is leading the federal investigation, and they have been able to tag all of the evidence that has been already gathered and they are embedded and working with our police department to tag everything that is coming through the pile. Uh, they've also conducted LIDAR, um, about 3D picture taking of the building before the demolition. Uh, and of course, they've been speaking as well to many, many people with information uh, that could contribute to understanding the causes. So uh, through NIST, we'll be having periodic updates Obviously, many, many other people are seeking information. Our state attorney is coordinating locally what would uh, the future, the, the future investigation. So it's it's very early to name any uh, sources, but of course everything is under review. Brooke, oh. well, you want to say they can repeat the same thing sí. in Spanish? Eh, estamos siguiendo con la investigación especialmente por el gobierno federal que está to totalmente involucrado en la, la búsqueda de la evidencia y marcándolo, pero nosotros estamos siguiendo con la búsqueda como siempre y estamos pa eh, guardando la evidencia para el futuro mientras todos están mirando, uh, en, eh, dando entrevistas con todas personas que tienen información, pero es muy, muy temprano decir algo de las causas. Well, we're definitely searching. I, I mean, you know, unfortunately, we're not seeing anything positive uh, that continues in, in that sense. You know, the, the key things we're looking for uh, all throughout in regards to void space, livable spaces, you know, we're not coming across that. So we're you know, actively searching as aggressive as we can, uh, you know, to see if we can assist with the families and, and locate individuals. So will this be changed over to a recovery That we don't know yet. I mean, I don't, you know, we're, we're actively looking into it and, and having different dialogues in regards to our strategies moving forward. Got Christian over here, followed by uh, My question for the chief. Good morning. Good morning. No, uh, we haven't been able to clear any of the search grids. Uh, again, uh, G1 and you know G2, G3 in the garage areas. You know, hopefully we can we can get to sooner in regards to those aspects. Uh, the other grids is is where the entire structures fell into. Uh, and yes, I mean definitely uh, with this type of collapse and that pancake, you know there were several layers of floors per se, um, you know that would be subterranean. But the three that, that had significant flooding because the water. Yes, we we've actively you know maintained pumping water anytime there needs, and yes, that's that's been clear. Over here, followed by the lady. In Uh, I don't have the exact uh, feet per se to let you know. Um, definitely floor-wise, we've you know we've definitely delayered several several floors, um, but each grid is different. You know, just again the magnitude of this collapse and, and the way the building collapsed in certain uh, areas. Uh, you know, we've been able to go a few floors lower in one grid per se than the other. I don't have the exact number, um, but you know we definitely haven't been able to get to the you know the, the lower floors per se. The first floor. From 
some victims that we rescued or yeah we wouldn't be able to provide anything. Last two questions right here, sir. We'll this is, uh, also for the fire chief. Um, sorry, I apologize. Chief, have there been any injuries or have any of the rescue personnel needed medical treatment for any reason after working on the refill? Well, we've been very fortunate where we haven't had any significant injuries to any of our personnel, our firefighters. Uh, we've had some minor dehydration concerns. Uh, you know, obviously we're working around the clock. Uh, you know, these brave men and women, you know, we're going full speed, 110%. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, definitely a lot of work exertion that we're, we're performing. Uh, so we've had a few dehydration, as was mentioned earlier, with some uh, buses that we brought in to kind of help with uh, the rehab cycle, just to, to cool body temperature and stuff. Uh, but very fortunate, no injuries, significant injuries to report. Mayor, obviously there's going to be an extraordinary amount of, extraordinary amount of civil suits being filed down the road. The condo board, the conversations Obviously, you're dealing with legal reps. Obviously, they have a sense of remorse, but how have those conversations gone, even if you had time to deal with that? The whole world wants to know what happened here, and especially uh, those who are the victims, uh, the survivors, the family members of those who are in the pile. Clearly, everybody wants to know what happened. So. Uh, we do have lawsuits that have been filed. We have numerous investigations. And, um, you know, I, I look forward to learning the truth, as do we all. Uh, but I think it will be a while till everything is, is understood. And I'm very confident that, uh, especially the federal investigative team, will get to the bottom of this and that we'll learn uh, what, what happened, what could have been prevented, and how to make sure it never happens again. Madam Mayor, we were able to squeeze in two last questions. We're going to go with NBC and finish off with Telemundo. Thanks so much, Joel. Could you guys help uh, better explain the discrepancy between that 113 number and the 70 number? And what is being, what is being done to identify those 43 individuals? And my other follow up was um, Lieutenant General Russell Monterey suggested that this should go into a recovery process. And I'm no expert on this matter, but there's been, there are families who are also very eager to recover their bodies for burial purposes. If you guys were to go the recovery route, could this process be sped? Your first question was about the numbers. So as we've said all along, we've taken every single tip into consideration. People call anonymously. People call and don't leave return phone numbers. People call with partial information, not enough to really secure whether that person may or may not have been in the building. So we have been extremely diligent in following through on all of those leads. We know that there may be people in the building that were in the building that nobody has called to identify. So we want to be as thorough as possible. With that to be said, we are now preparing to differentiate between those that we could confirm were in the building and those for whom it's still not confirmed in the way that we would feel confident. So we will be continuing to update those numbers and we'll bring you updates as soon as we have them. And is part of your team like trying to reach out and follow those leads? Oh yes, so we have detectives constantly calling. They've reviewed uh, dozens of databases to, co to confirm whether these people could have been here. So this is a very, very thorough and exhaustive process. Obviously, when your loved ones are involved, we will spare nothing to make sure that we've correctly identified who was and who was not in that building. Uh, as far as whether moving into the next phase will speed up the process, the answer is we will continue, as now, to thoroughly, carefully uh, sift through these piles. Really, you will not see a difference. Uh, we, we will be as thorough as we've been throughout to carefully search for uh, bodies and uh, belongings and to catalog and to uh, respectfully deal with uh, any remains that we find. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The last question, Tom. Yes, the chief answered perhaps in Spanish. Um, we've had um, fires, 13 days, no boys after the demolition. How close are we to moving to 
Bueno, como hemos explicado ya, este es un proceso bastante complejo, el cual eh, requiere eh, ser muy metódicos en el proceso. El, el hecho de que todavía nos encontramos en esta parte del proceso no quiere decir que no estamos encontrando eh, víctimas fallecidas, restos humanos. Entonces, de todas formas, el proceso en sí no ha cambiado mucho. Esto no va a agilizar el proceso de encontrar eh, víctimas y por eso continuamos eh, trabajando eh, en este esfuerzo de, de búsqueda y rescate. Tenemos todo el equipo necesario, tenemos todo el personal necesario en este momento para, para continuar esta labor y estratégicamente eh, estos expertos saben que esta es la mejor manera de manejar esta situación. I want to say that for the family members who are waiting and waiting, excruciatingly waiting for information, they, they know what is happening. They understand that the news of their loved ones may be tragic loss. And they, uh, as they're contacted to let them know that a loved one has passed, they're prepared for it. And so I think everybody will be ready when it's time to move to the next phase. Y en español quiero decir, cada, de la fam cada familia, cada miembro de la familia que está esperando y esperando para las noticias está preparada. Ya sabe exactamente cómo van a recibir la información eh, y, y ellos saben que el Estamos haciendo todo lo que podemos y también ellos están listos para cerrar este capítulo de, de su vida. Gracias. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, folks. Our next joint